In this PowerPoint 2016 video, we're going to be discussing the review tab of PowerPoint 2016. Now, the main focus of the review tab is to look over your content after you are finished creating it. And you're given a bunch of different tools in order to do that, including proofreading tools in the form of spelling and grammar and the thesaurus, insights, which lets you look information up on the internet from within PowerPoint 2016, translating text into different languages and setting the language that you intend for the PowerPoint presentation to be written in, adding in comments to the document that don't actually show in the presentation but are available to people who are editing the document, and comparing this version of your PowerPoint presentation with previous versions that you may have created, and to accept and reject the changes and overall review them and make sure you have what you need. And lastly, another way to write notes onto your PowerPoint presentation directly is to use pen inking. If you've ever used a Microsoft product, then you're almost certainly familiar with Spellcheck. The Spellcheck in PowerPoint works the same way as pretty much any other program. When you have errors in your spelling, it's going to be underlined with red text. And if you want to check that, see if you can replace a word with the correct spelling, all you need to do is hit spelling and grammar. It will search through all the text you have in your PowerPoint presentation and suggest changes for each misspelled word. In this case, something is obviously a misspelling of something. So in the spelling and grammar slide out window, it's going to suggest the word something as a change to that. If we want to change it, we can hit change. If we want to change all misspellings of that same word, we could hit change all. And if we want to ignore that spelling correction, we can hit ignore. Ignore all cases of that misspelling, or even add the word to the dictionary if it's a properly spelled word that Microsoft PowerPoint just doesn't recognize. In this case, we'll just hit change here, and we'll do that for all of these four misspelled words as well. Is is obviously spelled with a S, wrong only has one G, and the word here has one R. So in this case, we've corrected all the spelling mistakes in this document and we're good to go. Now the thesaurus is different than spelling and grammar. You're not actually trying to correct things, but what you would do with the thesaurus is take a word and actually change it into a word with a similar meaning. So if we hit thesaurus here, it's going to suggest words that are like something, but don't have exactly the same meaning. For instance, approximately is kind of like another way of saying something, but it may be a more precise word depending on your situation. If you have some text in your document and you actually want to look it up online and see if you can gather more information, that's what you use insights for. So with the smart lookup, it's going to give you the insights slide out menu that has immediate access to Wikipedia, Bing image search, and Bing search engine search as well. If we want to convert our text into a different language, we can easily do that with the translate option. Translate selected text will take this information here and immediately translate it into a different information. And it'll give you a little warning to translate your document. Text will be sent over the internet to a third party provider. If you're okay with that, go ahead and confirm it. So now that we have this slide out window open, we can go ahead and translate our text into just about any language we want. Uh, let's go ahead and choose a simple one uh, such as Spanish. Now, in this case, it can't perfectly translate the exact phrase spelling mistakes, but it does give us a Spanish translation of the word spelling. So we can go ahead and select this text and replace our word spelling with the Spanish version of it. If we were to change the proofing language to Spanish, then you would immediately notice that all of these other words would be considered misspelled. And that's because it would be checking for Spanish spellings on all of the words. If you want to change the language that spelling and grammar is checking for, then simply set the proofing language here. And you can also customize the language further in the language section of PowerPoint options. Let's go ahead and add a comment to our document now. Now, whenever we add a comment, this isn't something that's actually going to be showing in the final product when we're displaying our presentation. It's just simply a note that we add to the document so that whoever's opening it up or perhaps whoever's editing it is going to know what we added, what changes we made, and giving them advice on maybe how to present the PowerPoint or how to make changes to it. So with this note, we can click so with this note, whoever is opening up this document can go ahead and click on this and see 
who made the note and what the note was about with the information that the person who made the note typed in. If you had multiple notes, you'd be able to navigate between them simply by hitting previous and next rather than clicking around on the slide. And you can also add in new notes from here. Any of these little notes that you stick on a slide can be positioned anywhere you want. It doesn't really make a difference. It just needs to be in a spot where whoever needs to read it will actually notice it. Whenever you actually have comment notes on your slide, you'll be given the option to navigate between previous and next in the comment section over here. And if you click on one, you can simply hit delete to remove it. But if we want to hide it from the design interface, we can click on the show comments drop down and hide show markup. Whenever you want to see a list of the comments that are available, simply enable the comments pane, which is the default function if you click up here as well. In order to demonstrate the compare functionality of PowerPoint 2016, I've gone ahead and created a separate version of this review tab PowerPoint presentation. So if we want to compare this one with another one and accept and reject changes, we have to hit compare, find that file on our computer, select it and hit merge. Here you're going to be given a list of changes between this version of the presentation and the other one. You can see changes to specific slides over here in slide changes, but for new slides that were created or old slides that were removed, you would see that in presentation changes. Same presentation changes can be found over here on the left where your slides are listed. If you want to see the changes, you would simply left click on one of them. Any presentation level changes are also going to be shown over here on the left where your slides are listed. And if you left click on any of these notifications, you would accept a slide into your presentation. You can also accept changes by left clicking on the change, going over to accept, hitting accept change, or you can accept all of them simultaneously for a specific slide by hitting accept all changes to this slide or the entire presentation by choosing accept all changes to this presentation. Likewise, if you select any of the changes over here by left clicking on the ones on this list, either all changes or each one individually, you can reject those changes by going over to reject and hitting reject change. In the same way, you also have the option to reject all changes to this slide or the entire presentation all at once. If we go over here to the slides listing and click on this change, it's going to show us what the new change would look like and it will have it selected. However, we can simply click on that change and go over to reject if we actually don't want to accept that. By default, by clicking on that, you'll notice that there's a check mark and that's going to mark it as accepted. So if we want to reject it, we can either have the slide selected or click over here on presentation changes for the exact same effect and reject that change. After we're happy with all of the changes we've accepted or rejected inside of our document, we can simply hit end review. Another way to navigate between the changes, and this way might be a bit quicker, is to hit previous and next, which will just go up and down the list of changes until you reach the end. And then much like a typical spell check, it will ask you if you want to start from the beginning so that you can review them once more. But once you've accepted and rejected all the changes that you deem necessary, you can go ahead and hit end review to confirm everything. However, you do have to be careful with this. When you hit end review, break. However, you do have to be careful with this. When you hit end review, this will end the review and any unapplied changes will be discarded. Meaning if you had any of these changes and you didn't accept or reject them, they're just going to be thrown away from the current document. And if you want to get as close to drawing on your presentation as possible, you would use the inking tools, of which you have a pen, a highlighter tool, eraser, a lasso, and the ability to just select objects. Now you can use these tools in just about any manner that you want. A typical use might be to take the red pen and circle part of your presentation that you actually want to focus on. Another option may be to use the highlighter to focus on certain words by highlighting them. The eraser tool erases specifically whatever was created with pen and highlighter. So if you try to erase the text of your document, it's not going to get rid of anything in a text box. But if you erase the highlighting, or the pen tool, it will get rid of that immediately. Using lasso select, you can take any of your pinning or highlighting and select that by simply drawing a circle or other similar shape around that pin or highlighting in order to select it. 
And at that point, you can manipulate it however you want, such as stretching it, moving it to a different location on the document, or deleting it entirely. If you're just trying to select one pinning or one piece of highlighting on your document, you can just use the Select Objects tool and left click on it directly to select it. As you can see, you do have different variations of pins, including different colors and thicknesses that are available to you while you're drawing. And if you want total control over your color, you can select over here any color you want. With the thickness dropdown, you can select between many different thicknesses on your pen. So that's all for the review tab of PowerPoint 2016. I'll see you in the next video.